we're social animals, uh, we've evolved that way, and you know, it makes sense to value the, the contact with other humans. Jimmy's work has this great uh, you know, ability to draw people in because it's unusual, it's strange, it's visible, engaging people in, in ways that in a, in a way forces an individual to make a choice, to think about in this moment right now, how do I respond to this strange experience? I, I took an inflatable suit inside a bar. Everybody at the bar thinks it's pretty funny, but the bartender doesn't have the same sense of humor. And of course, he called the police and the police told me uh, that it was too crowded because it was this big street festival. And I said, oh, I, I understand officers. So uh, I deflated and I asked him, well, what about bicycles? Do you, guys, do you guys like bicycles? I kept going back to this weekly festival and I liked pushing against something that like, hey, well, how come we can't just have an inflatable in the streets? Yes, that would be a problem. If everybody did this, it would be anarchy and chaos. But at the same time, isn't it great to just not sit there and do what you're supposed to do? There is conflict. That's part of what makes it interesting. And it's that engagement in that conflict and tension that, that creates new ideas. You know, that's, that births new experiences as well, you know? I enjoy thinking about aesthetics and I enjoy thinking about how we can combine different thoughts, ideas, and philosophies in a visual and experiential way. But at the same time, I really want to just enjoy and exist and I want to question things. What are the ways that we can engage the public in innovative ways and, but meaningful ways at the same time? And creating that environment for people, I think, opens up new avenues for their own creative thought. Sometimes problems have that benefit of pulling people together, you know, and, and I've seen that in his tricycle. I really wanted it to be large, but airy. And that's how the design of those wispy quarter inch steel rods to make this cloud-like form originated. It's just its impact on, on you know, in bicycling and, and this question of how do we make the winter time more pleasant and more livable, I think is something that in our own work at the CUDC, we're exploring in many ways. It was snowing and freezing cold. It hurt so bad and I was having to tighten bolts and connect wires. Man, when I flipped that switch, instantly people started talking to me in a way that it was as if we were friends. There's a term for these types of interventions, tactical urbanism. Projects that transform the built environment that aren't a large-scale, top-down bureaucratic process, but can be initiated by a designer, by residents, by different people in the, in the community to change their place. Well, I'm going maybe seven to 10 miles an hour. I'm going very, very slow. And so cars are then coming up to my speed, and I'm taking up the full right lane, and then they're taking up the left lane. It's something that starts shifting the dialogue. It's actually something made. It's in that space. It goes beyond theory and just idea to natural intervention that people are then forced to respond to and, and kind of builds, builds the dialogue. You know, why, why shouldn't he be allowed to ride that thing on the street? What's wrong with the street that doesn't allow that rather than what's wrong with him not fitting into the street? It's striving to be between the spectacle and the absurd. But then you have a moment, you, you, you get a break in the continuity, you get a break in the small talk. And then if that happens, what I say is people can then be vulnerable, people can then be open. You know, there's a, there's a short circuit of the natural order of events. And then out of all that mix, you will have a genuine interaction.